Hi, I'm Wesley Chan from the Google Cloud team, joined by my colleague Martin to welcome you to Serverless Migration Station, where each video shows developers one modernization technique for one of our serverless compute platforms. Today, our little friend Porter will take Python 2 App Engine developers from Cloud NDB to Cloud Data Store. This is an optional migration, so you don't need to make this journey unless you have a good reason to do so. That sounds good, Wes. Uh, but wait, my time is precious. Uh, why is this migration optional? Yeah, that's a very good question, Martin. Well, legacy Python 2 App Engine developers have traditionally used App Engine's NDB library to talk to Data Store. In the previous Module 2 video, we showed you how to move from App Engine NDB and App Engine Data Store to Cloud NDB and Cloud Data Store. That migration had one specific goal. Modernizing App Engine apps means moving away from legacy services to unbundled services because the original services are feature complete. So all innovation moving forward only comes with the newer standalone services. You can move to Python 3, the next generation App Engine service, and that's why this additional migration to Cloud Data Store is optional. By the way, it's just app migration. Since App Engine Data Store and Cloud Data Store point to the same database in your project, no data migration is needed. Review the Module 2 video and Code Lab to refamiliarize yourself with our starting point. The links are below as well. Let's pause for a moment to let you review before moving on. Because App Engine Data Store and Cloud Data Store point to the same database in your project, one great feature of that migration is that you didn't have to migrate the data, only doing the app migration in the video. That's right. And not only did I watch that video, I helped you make it, remember? Anyway, uh, I know how to migrate from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB now. I'm also pretty sure you said by migrating to Cloud NDB, I'd be accessing Cloud Data Store. But didn't you just say we're migrating to Cloud Data Store today? If I'm already on Cloud Data Store, why would you want me to migrate to it? I'm confused. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's not that. Apologies for the confusion. You're right. In both cases, we're still on the Cloud Data Store database. But here, we're talking libraries. When Data Store matured to becoming its own product, the Google Cloud team created a new native client library for non-App Engine apps. That's also where we point Python 3 and other next generation App Engine runtimes. Cloud NDB is made just for Python 2 App Engine developers. Today's migration is for those considering that extra step to going from Cloud NDB to the Cloud Data Store client libraries. OK, I think I understand now. You're saying that there are two client libraries to access Cloud Data Store, one for longtime Python App Engine users who prefer the NDB style, and while the other is for those completely new to Cloud Data Store. Is that right? Yes, essentially, that's right. Although Cloud NDB can use with the next generation and Python 3 App Engine apps as well as non-App Engine apps, meaning Python developers have two options for accessing Cloud Data Store, depending on their preference. Now, the real question is why you would consider migrating. Yeah, that's my point. If both can be used for App Engine and non-App Engine apps, why should I even consider migrating? It'll require some effort without much gain, uh, since I'm not getting any new features and generally expect no changes to my app. Yep, that is absolutely correct, which is the main reason why this migration is optional. If your older App Engine apps uses Cloud NDB to access Cloud Data Store, and newer non-app engine apps use its native client library and satisfy that everything's working, there's really no need to change. The only reason you would consider it is if your organization wants to consolidate to a single client library for consistency shared across all of your apps. It'll reduce the size of your code base and the one common library would become robust because it'll be used by many apps, it'd be fully featured, fully debugged, and increase code reuse. This makes code across apps easier to manage and lower maintenance costs overall. However, if that's not worth your effort, just stop now. OK, uh, I'll buy it, Wes. Uh, let's say I want to do that. Uh, or maybe I'll think about it, and I want to at least see what this migration entails. All right, sounds good. OK, everyone, same drill as before. Copy your Module 2 Cloud NDB app code. Or if you don't have it, clone the repo and download the zip file. The only decision you have to make is whether you want to migrate the Python 2 version of the app or Python 3. These are in the Module 2A and 2B folders. You can also migrate the Python 2 version first, then port it to Python 3, which is how the code lab does it. We'll show you how to do both in a minute, but let's pause now so you can go grab the code and also pull up the code lab so you can get hands-on experience with this migration. All right, let's go to the computer and walk you through it. 
it's always good to start with a working app. From your Python 3 Malta 2 folder, run gcloud app deploy to upload to App Engine. If you're still on Python 2, double check that Flask and NEB are in lib. If not, or you're unsure, it's fine to delete the lib folder and reinstall, then deploy. Your motivation to upgrade to Python 3? No more manual bundling. Regardless, when deployed, point of browser or curl to your app and confirm the output is the same as from before, whether modules 0, 1, or 2. OK, now let's migrate to Cloud Data Store. The best part about migrations is what doesn't change. app.yaml and appigenconfig.py stay as is. Same goes for index.html and templates. For requirements.txt, switch from Cloud NDB to Cloud Data Store. Also add versions here. I left them out of the video since version numbers change all the time, and also it's different between Python 2 and 3. Regardless, the repo will be updated unlike this video. OK, Python 2 developers must delete their lib folders and reinstall now, while Python 3 users can just chill. When done, we can move on to the main application file. At the top of main.py, we're importing and initializing the API client for Cloud Data Store instead of Cloud NDB. We also have to add a new import for daytime because Cloud Data Store doesn't do automatic timestamps, so we have to do it. For store visit, NDB acts more like an ORM or object relational mapper where you declare a data model, instantiate an object with the desired data, then save it. On the other hand, with Data Store, you create an entity specifying its kind as a key. You get back a dict like object to add to your data as key value pairs, or in our case, we merge an entire Python dictionary into it, then save. There's also no context manager we use in Cloud Data Store. In Fetch Visit, you can see querying is similar, but Data Store is a bit easier to read. NDB favors chaining methods together, but Data Store has a more step by step approach, plus the convenience of getting back Python dictionaries back without having to do additional conversion like NDB. And that's all that's needed to migrate this sample app to Cloud Data Store. Save, gcloud app deploy, and confirm it still works just as before. All right, let's go back to the main presentation. Thanks for showing us that migration, Wes. It was good to see that Cloud Data Store isn't that different from Cloud NDB. Of course, Martin. It's true the code is similar, but this is a sample app. In real life, there are likely more challenges, especially related to complex queries. So I've linked to the queries pages for both libraries so you can see more differences between them. Well, I'm doing the code lab on my own time. Uh, I might need to see the Cloud NDB and Cloud Data Store docs. Uh, you got those links handy? Yep, I thought you'd ask. Here are the links to both the Cloud NDB and Cloud Data Store docs, as well as to their client library repos. Finally, we link to the App Engine Data Store docs. Don't forget the repo has both the start and finish folders so you can reset back to the 2A or 2B code if you take a wrong turn during the code lab or want to compare your answers with ours in the modules 3A or 3B folders. By the way, if you're still wondering whether to choose Cloud NDB or Cloud Data Store, here are our recommendations. Creating a new app in Python 3, App Engine or otherwise, go straight to Cloud Data Store. Got a Python 2 NDB App Engine app? Migrate to Cloud NDB, then port to Python 3. Lastly, if using Cloud Data Store elsewhere and want a consistent code base using only one client library, consider this migration. If not, don't bother, because Cloud NDB works in both Python 2 and 3 with App Engine or outside of App Engine, so there's really no need to move off unless you have Cloud Data Store code elsewhere. Ah, thanks, Wes. Uh, that was a really good explanation. That it helps me make my decision. Uh, by the way, on another note, I also heard that Cloud Data Store was renamed. Is that right? All right, yes, Martin. Uh, it's a bit more than that, and I didn't want to distract users from the main content, but yes, it's true. The next generation data store service launched in 2017. As it inherited some features from the Firebase real time database, it was rebranded as Cloud Firestore. All existing data store databases have been upgraded under the covers to Firestore in data store mode. For new applications, consider using the Cloud Firestore in native mode. We've given you a link to learn more about when you would choose one over the other. Neither the Cloud NDB nor Cloud Data Store libraries, however, can access those Firebase features. You do really need to use the Cloud Firestore client library. If you have an app, App Engine or otherwise, and at some point down the road want to take advantage of those Firebase features, consider further migrating to Cloud Firestore. If interested, check out Module 6. Ah, oh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I didn't even know about Cloud Firestore, and I'll take a look at that module.
That sounds like another serverless migration station episode we can work on together. Ah, that'll be fun for sure. Now, what other migrations should you consider for your App Engine apps? If your app uses the original App Engine task queues, consider migrating to Cloud Tasks and check out modules 7, 8, and 9. If you're curious about containerizing your apps, check out the App Engine to Cloud Run modules 4 and 5. Finally, if your App Engine app is simple like our sample app, consider migrating to Cloud Functions. More on that in Module 11. Sounds like a lot of options for our users out there. Happy to be working with you to help guide our users and show them best practices, Wes. Sounds good, Martin. And that wraps today's optional migration to Cloud data store. On behalf of Martin and Porter, this is Wesley Chen from Google Cloud. And we look forward to seeing you at the next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon.